that I'm making right now were new shooters, shooters that have never been to a fire or a firing range, who have never really handled a firearm, and they're a little bit nervous about it, and they're wanting to gather information to make sure that they can be safe when they're doing it. So my audience that I'm attending this for, you probably aren't carrying a gun on your person yet, but you may do it in the future. So these videos are to help you prepare yourself, and I hope that they are helpful to you. This is Colleen from Keeping the Peace, Defense of Handgun Training for Women, and today we're going to start a new video series. It's going to have 10 different videos that will be short and sweet. It's going to be called Preparing the New Shooter. Episode 1, as it should be, will be on safety and making sure that the mind is engaged anytime you're handling a firearm or you're within arm's reach of one. We're going to go through the four major firearm safety rules that you would hear at any reputable handgun training school, military, law enforcement, pretty much across the board. Um, sometimes you'll see long lists of rules at ranges, but if you're following these four major safety rules, you'll keep yourself and other people safe. The first one, always treat all guns as loaded all the time. This is a trainer gun made out of epoxy. It's a piece of plastic basically designed to look like a 1911. And even these I handle as if they are loaded firearms because every time you handle something gun-shaped, you're driving in habits. So if you were to be irresponsible with this, it might drive in the habits that would make you irresponsible with a real firearm. So I would suggest even treating your trainer pistols as if they're loaded firearms. How do we do that? The next three tell you how to treat all guns like they're loaded. The second firearm safety rule is never point the muzzle, which is the business end, at anything you don't wish to destroy. And I always add in caveats like including your own body parts. I'll show you a slide here of what I mean. As you saw in that slide, there are many people who use holsters that are not made well or holsters that are not meant for ease of reholstering that collapse upon themselves and the shooter is tempted to use their support hand to open up the holster in order to get the muzzle end of the firearm in. This would require you to point your own gun at your own hand, which is a no-no. So if you have a holster like that, it's better to remove the holster, insert the firearm, and then insert the entire holstered firearm into your pants to keep you from breaking rule number two. Another uh, way that people break this rule a lot is at shooting ranges where there are dividing walls in between the shooters, but when they're handling their firearms to do, say, racking of the slide or clearing malfunctions, they'll actually point the muzzle to the side, forgetting that that wall is not bulletproof and there's another person standing right there. So, you know, when you're in a shooting range, you have to kind of alter the way you do things in order to make sure you're thinking about the people on the other side of the partitions. So be sure that you're in control of everywhere that this muzzle points. Number three. Make sure you keep your trigger finger off the trigger until not only you have your sights on the target, but you've actually made the decision to shoot. I like to tell my students to make sure that you don't just keep it outside the trigger guard, but also way up here alongside the frame. That's a much safer place to put your trigger finger. If you rest it here and you were to trip or fall or be startled, it would be very easy for you to clench those fingers in and accidentally squeeze the trigger. You're going to be much less apt to do that if you have your trigger finger way up here alongside the frame. The last one, number four, is know what your target is plus what's on the other side of it. We just said in the last room we were talking about it, that you're responsible for everything your bullets impact. So it's your responsibility to learn what's on the other side of your target or your threat if it's a self-defense scenario. Keep in mind, sometimes bullets go through things 
And sometimes even the best shooter can miss under the right circumstances. So, don't assume that you could never miss. Don't assume that your bullets could never go through something. Make sure that you're aware of what's on the other side. And the reason that I always have a picture like this present when I'm talking about firearm safety is because simply memorizing these rules isn't enough. Okay, You have to actually have your mind engaged while you're in the presence of a firearm. And especially if you're like me and you carry a firearm on your body all the time. There's many of you out there that do that. So this is the end of today's episode number one, safety and making sure that the mind is engaged. I hope that these videos are helpful for you, the new shooter. As you're preparing yourself to go to the firing range for the first time or to handle a firearm for the first time. In the next video, episode two, we'll start talking about the principles of marksmanship. So I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, number two, when we will talk, talk about gripping the firearm with authority. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.